Good morning and welcome back to my channel, High Tunnel and Field Tomato Production. Today is March the 20th and I'm out here in the greenhouse. Uh, now this greenhouse is a 12 by 12. It's heated by a wood furnace and a heat exchanger on the inside and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, I've got my flats planted with seeds. I put a hundred seeds per flat and I've got four flats. Now my uh, high tunnels that I'll be growing these in are, uh, I believe they're 30 by 84 and I can put 160 to 180 plants per high tunnel. And I'll also be growing some field tomatoes this year and I'll be giving some updates on that. Now most of y'all know I plant a Florida 7514 tomato as a determinant. It was developed in Florida in one of the research labs down there. It has an amazing history to it if you would like to do some research on that. And uh, what I like about this tomato is that not only is it a determinant and it will produce its crop over about a five to six week period, it has a gene in it that has the flavor. Uh, some of you may or may not know when they do uh, hybridizing of tomatoes, one of the first things that goes wrong is that they breed out the flavor. Now a lot of uh, breeders don't care. You've got tom tomatoes like the uh, uh, Red Deuce, a lot of Amish grow those and some more that uh, th they really ship well, they're hardy, uh, they handle good, but they don't have the flavor. And what I want and what my customers want is flavor. To me, the 7514 has the best old time tomato flavor that I've been able to find so far. Now I will be testing some tomatoes this year. I'm going to try one called Grand Marshall. Has a really good heat tolerance to it. Means that it'll set fruit in hot weather and handle it. I believe it also came out of Florida. And I'm also going to try one called a Tasty Lee. This is uh, grown specifically for the stores out west. Uh, I believe it's uh, called a public. It's a grocery chain. Uh, we don't have them here where I'm at, which is in Arkansas, North Central in the Ozarks. But I understand it's one that they really like. And of course, uh, they think it has flavor. I've never eaten one, so I'm going to try a few of them. And it also ships well with them and their customers like it. And for them, that's what it's about. Well, I'm growing what my customers like. Uh, when they try my tomatoes, uh, they just absolutely love it. A large amount of my tomatoes are going for canning. Uh, we're still country here in the Ozarks and a lot of people can. I had orders from uh, for 100 pounds and more. One guy bought 200 pounds just to can. And so I grow what they want. Uh, now let me get off of this right here and show you what I've got going. Okay, there's my flats. I'm using a heat mat to germinate with. I set my heat at 78 degrees and there's a little thermostat down there. I've got two heat mats that are uh, four foot long and you can see them right there and then you'll notice a canopy. Uh, that canopy is just homemade, it's got greenhouse plastic on it, and that's a dome. And then of course what that does is that holds the humidity in. It allows me, especially at nighttime when I'm getting these plants started, you put the dome down, set your thermostat. I try to keep the inside temperature of this high, uh, excuse me, this greenhouse at uh, 50 degrees, maybe 45. I put a blanket on top of it at night and that holds the heat in. I can maintain a temperature of 75 degrees at night uh, by doing that and I don't have to heat all the air of the uh, greenhouse. Give me just, there's my seedlings. They are up and doing really, really well. So I, I'm excited about them and uh, Really looking forward to the uh, season this year, as I am every year. Uh, I will transplant these probably 
I may wait two weeks. My goal is to try to be in the high tunnels by the 15th to the 19th of April. Our last frost up in my area here is between the 10th and the 20th. And to keep from having to deal with the cold temperatures, and of course we don't know, that's a good ways off. But uh, I will transplant these in one or two weeks into four inch pots. Uh, give them a few days and at that point I'll start giving them a mild fertilizer solution. And by the 15th I will have these plenty big to be able to go into the uh, greenhouses, or excuse me, high tunnel. And uh, once I put them in those pots and get them out of these flats, of course, I'm going to have to keep this uh, greenhouse uh, warmer at night. Uh, they suggest the University of Missouri says 55 degrees. I think that's pretty good. If, uh, they can withstand temperatures a lot lower, of course, but I want to get these up. And one of the reasons you go into a four-inch pot, and I've noticed that the uh, local greenhouses, I don't care if it's Walmart or the you know, uh, uh, hardware store, whoever's got plants for sale outside, they're starting to sell bigger plants. And they know that those plants will reach maturity a lot quicker. A forest pot, Missouri says, will get you two weeks on your maturing date. So if I've got a 72-day tomato, and that's from transplant, uh, if I put that in a forest pot and go outside, I should gain two weeks on that. My goal is to have ripe tomatoes for sale by the 4th of July, if not before. I did it last year, it worked really good, but the weather conditions are always different. So uh, I'm going to get off this thing right now. If you'd like to leave a comment, have a suggestion, need some information, I'd be glad to help you. Uh, God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.